Welcome to Means of Grace, a podcast produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. Welcome back to the Means of Grace podcast. I'm Jesse Innes, the Director of Communications for the Leadership Development Team. And I'm Kim Ingram, part of the conference staff in the Western North Carolina Annual Conference. Our guests today are Debbie Allen, District Superintendent of the Southwest District in the Florida Conference, Donnell Fitz-Jeffries, pastor of U- University City UMC in the Western North Carolina Conference, and Chris Ford, the co-director of the North Carolina Institute for Spiritual Direction and Formation, and a member of St. Francis UMC in North Carolina Conference. Welcome. So as we kick it off today, um, would like to hear more about um, you all and ask that you maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and just give us an introduction into how you became a spiritual director. I'll be happy to jump in here. I um, I'm a mother and a grandmother and um, a true lifelong learner. And um, I have been a spiritual director for almost 40 years. I came about being a spiritual director because um, my own director of about three years at that time said to me, have you ever considered becoming a spiritual director? And because my director was a priest, quite honestly, I had not considered it because I thought I couldn't, Um, but was very quickly assured that that certainly was something I could do and that he saw the charisms in me that would make me a good director. So after some prayerful discernment, I went through my training and became a director. And I think it is the most wonderful ministry in the world. (laughs) I am very passionate about about it. And I'm eager to hear about how the rest of you came came about that. Thanks, Chris. Donnell, what's your story? Well, um, I've been pastoring for about 36 years now, and I've been involved in spiritual direction for about the same amount of time. I started taking spiritual direction in Asheville, North Carolina, during my first appointment. Uh, And about six years ago, maybe, uh, I got involved in a school for spiritual direction. A new school was formed here in Western North Carolina. Wendy Miller was the director of the school, and it's a a certificate program at that time. And I graduated from there about five years ago um, and then immediately, um, you know, started to do spiritual direction for people uh, as individuals and then uh, also join uh, the staff of instructors for our current school of spiritual direction uh, called Beyond Borders, which is uh, located in Hood Seminary in Salisbury, North Carolina. That's great, Donnell. I want to talk a little bit more about that later. So thank you for that. And Debbie, tell us about you. Yeah, so I've been a pastor uh, for about 23 years now, and I came to spiritual direction uh, much later, it sounds like, than others, uh, about six years ago. We had an opportunity at one of the conferences uh, for pastors uh, to do to try spiritual direction on. They had sessions and spiritual directors, and I had been curious about that, and so I I went and it just felt like it fit in so many ways. And so I engaged with a spiritual director and had been doing that for several years. And then um, I heard about an opportunity at Garrett uh, to do a doctor of ministry in spiritual formation. And part of that was certification in spiritual direction. And I was really excited to be able to go ahead and do that. And so I uh, graduated last year and I've been doing spiritual direction with folks uh, for the last couple of years, um, mainly in groups, uh, in group spiritual direction, which has been uh, really fun uh, to engage in with clergy. All right, Chris. So you said you've been a spiritual director for 40 years? Almost 40 years. So this could that can make this question either really simple or really difficult. What is spiritual direction? Okay. well, first disclaimer is that obviously all of us have different definitions of spiritual direction. Um, So this is just mine. Um, Spiritual direction is a relationship between a trained director and a person who seeks to know God more deeply, who really wants to understand 
how to discern who, which is God's voice and which perhaps are the voices of other folks in our heads and our hearts. And um, to really find God and notice God in all of the aspects of their life. And so um, that's what we do in spiritual direction. Um, and the true director in the room is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, if if that is true, I'd like to hear how um, how Donnell and Debbie also uh, would would define what spiritual direction is. So, Donnell, what is spiritual direction for you? Well, you know, I agree with what Chris said. Uh, you always have three presents. If it's individual, there are always three presents in the room. You have the uh, person who's receiving direction. You have the one who's been trained as a spiritual director. But most of all, and most importantly, you have the, uh, the Holy Spirit or the presence of God or Christ, whichever you want to name it, in the room. And the actual director is the Spirit of God. Uh, and the goal, I think, in spiritual direction is to help the one who's seeking direction listen better. Uh, in our school, we emphasize being fully present. You know, we, we as directors want to be fully present in that moment in time, no distractions. Uh, we know that God is fully present for us. And so we hope that the one who's receiving direction will also learn to be fully present and to learn to listen better. Uh, and through that listening, not only be fully present in that moment of direction, but also in the life walk, uh, be more fully present and more aware of God's presence with them, with or with that person as they go by their work life, family life, and just regular everyday sleeping, eating and drinking life. And Debbie? How do you see it in your lens? Uh, so for me, I think the image and metaphor that stood out the most about spiritual direction has been uh, a midwife, uh, someone who is helping uh, the person going through an experience uh, to be able to be fully present, to be attuned to the Holy Spirit, um, to, to try and help ask questions or center a person so that they can be able to hear the spirit. And, and as Chris said, really kind of eliminate all of the other voices um, to, to really be attuned to the spirit. But that's kind of stood out for me uh, mid midwife midwifery as the, as the idea of, of what we are doing in spiritual direction and our function as directors. Thank you guys for that um, really colorful definition. So, Chris, you're a spiritual director and a licensed professional counselor. How do these differ? How are they different? So um, I get asked that question a lot, both by directees as well as clients that I used to see. I'm a retired counselor. I don't do that anymore. But the difference is that in counseling, people bring to you generally an issue or a problem, and the session will focus on um, understanding that better and maybe finding ways within this within this self of the client to approach that problem to help them to function better in life. In spiritual direction, somebody might come to you and mention the same issue. However, the focus would be on God, not on the issue. The focus would be on where is God in the midst of that and how is God speaking to us in the midst of that. So God is the focus in spiritual direction. Man, I wish I knew you guys when I first heard my call to ministry. Because <laughs> I was certainly <laughs> wrestling with whose voice am I hearing? Is this God's voice? Is this my voice? Is this the voices of my family or Anyway, so Chris, your organization references spiritual direction and spiritual formation separately. So how are they connected or, or are they connected? I think of spiritual uh, direction as a subset of spiritual formation. I mean, it's one of the spiritual practices that forms us. And um, so that's the primary way I, we think about it. Our organization desires to, and we are coming alongside congregations and um, individuals who are seeking to grow in their spiritual life. They may not be ready or even aware of spiritual direction when they first begin this process, but they are eager to grow. 
And so what we do want to do is offer things that allow them to grow in their relationship and then go back to their congregations and hopefully offer the same things there and empower people within those congregations to, to get hungry and thirsty to come to know God even more deeply. So, Chris, that's a great segue um, to a question I wanted to ask Donnell about, um, because I wonder in his training and experience with uh, spiritual direction, how that um, plays out as the pastor of a church. And do you do spiritual direction with members of your church or do you use the skills that you've developed in your training as a spiritual director in other ways um, as you you lead a congregation? Yeah, thank you for the question. I uh I do spiritual direction in my church. Uh, individuals will come to me. Uh, right now, the people that I see aren't members of my congregation. I have in the past seen members of my congregations. Um, but really, the training has helped me to become a better listener. You know, I'm more fully present now and less anxious about church meetings. I mean, I don't know how many of you have passed churches, but church meetings can be a very anxiety building experience. <laughs> uh, but when you're aware that God is present there and has always been present and will always be present, um, there is a sense in which I'm now able to listen uh, with more, just with more attention and I can hear what's being said without judgment. I know in our school, we really do stress the ability to hear without judgment. Uh, they have curiosity uh, but not to let that curiosity lead you in ways that are down like rabbit holes, but to be curious about what's really on the table in the moment. Where is God's present in what's being said or what's being discussed? Uh, always seeking uh, where is God in the one who is speaking in the moment? Um, and in our school, we try to also uh, reflect the diversity of people, African-American uh, and what does it mean to do spiritual direction with people who are not from your culture, uh, who may not be the same sexuality or, 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 or gender? Um, so we really are looking for ways to see God and hear God, uh, no matter who stands before you, so that they can be recognized, appreciated, so they can feel heard and experienced, uh, fully experienced as a human being. Yeah, I really love that. It sounds like, and we'll hear more from Debbie in just a second, but it sounds like you all really have um, utilized the skills that you've developed in spiritual direction in other kind of aspects of your lives and of your ministry and of your leadership. And that training could be valuable for persons, even if they don't want to become spiritual directors. And we're going to talk about more about training and how people access that. But, but I love um, hearing you talk more about that, Donnell. Thank you. So Debbie, you've done some intentional work with groups. Mm -hmm. If you could speak more to that, that'd be fantastic. Sure. So I, I think my first experience with group spiritual direction was years ago, and I didn't realize that's what it was. Um, I was a part of a Courage to Lead cohort um, with the work of Parker Palmer in Florida, probably 15 years ago, and clearness committees for anyone who's ever been part of that work are really do function uh, in many ways, uh, like spiritual direction. And so uh, where, where one person comes forward and, and sits and presents an issue and other people listen and are very present and ask questions. And it is all about the person in the center trying to navigate um, how they are attuned to the spirit. And, and so uh, as I was going through my training, um, that kept coming up, this idea of group spiritual direction, and it really resonated uh, with me. So I started uh, doing work with clergy women. Uh, so I've done two cohorts now, and I'm getting ready to start a third, where about six clergy women come together um, and we, we do covenants as we start our time together uh, for the confidentiality piece, since it is a, a group setting. Um, but we have journeyed together uh, over the course of several months, uh, meeting about twice a month for group spiritual direction time and, and really getting to be able to lift that up. And it's not 
I, I, lo- I love what Chris was saying earlier. It's about the Holy Spirit and it is about paying attention to that. And so the, you can hear, um, so many other people in the room hear so many different things about how the spirit is moving and working, uh, when, when someone is speaking and it's just beautiful to hear how that helps people get to a space of understanding what the spirit is doing in their life. Um, and so the, the group spiritual direction piece has been working really well for us. And one of the things that clergy women have talked about is the isolation that they feel often in ministry and how other clergy sometimes don't understand uh, some of the unique factors and dynamics that are at play for clergy women, um, especially ones who are, are married uh, and who may have children and are trying to juggle all of those aspects. And so the piece that pe- people really um, resonate with as well as the spiritual direction is the camaraderie of the group of not having to explain or unpack a whole bunch of things, but to just be able to say something and have other people in the space know exactly what they mean uh, by that. And so, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really uh, transformative and it's powerful to be part of um, just a small part of getting to help set the container for people to be able to do that sharing and that paying attention to the spirit. So can I ask Debbie a question? I'd like to, I'm curious. <laughs> so are those groups time limited or is it just until it has played out in season? Yeah, we've set them up where they've been time limited. Um, so they've been usually six or eight sessions that have been agreed upon beforehand. Um, I have, I've done other work one-on-one that's been more ongoing with people, but the groups we have, we have set up to be time limited. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. I like what Debbie was saying about the clearness committees. In fact, that's part of our training is that we actually take our, our students through the, through a clearness committee so they can experience that and have that sense of group, group dynamics, uh, what it means to listen within that group. Uh, it really is helpful. Now, in your image of having a, being a mid, midwife, I love that too, because a midwife just delivers. No sense of judgment. You know, it's just age in the process of bringing new, new life. I think that's wonderful. I'm going to steal that, okay? Okay. Um, so I wonder if one of you would share with us uh, um, kind of how does somebody go about it? So like they've listened to this podcast and it's like, wow, this sounds really interesting, something that I could benefit from. What would you advise them about how you might find a spiritual director? And um, are there some credentials that you're looking for um, in a spiritual director to kind of know that it's somebody that you can trust their training and, and kind of what they're doing? What, what's your advice around that? You could certainly, could certainly go to um, our website, which is ncspiritualdirection.org. And we do have um, a list of vetted spiritual directors that are on there with a little bio and a way to reach them. And I would say, and I always say when people call for a referral, I refer them to that list. But I also say, you know, take down two or three names. Don't just take down one. Take down two or three. Go ahead and make contact with them and ask if you may spend a few minutes with them in a kind of a mini session, if you will, to get a sense of whether or not it feels like there's a connection. Um, This is a relationship. And so it's real important that you feel like this is somebody that you can at least begin to trust and ask about their training. Um, You know, spiritual direction is one of those things that um, our professional organization, Spiritual Directors International, has really pushed against any kind of... um, accreditation process. And so there are some benchmarks, certainly, for a training program, but there is no national sort of accreditation for it. So I just encourage people to ask, tell me about your training. Um, have you received a certificate in a, from a program that really equipped you to do this ministry? So that's generally what I suggest for people. Thank you, Chris. I wonder, Donnell, Debbie, do you have anything that you would add to that? I would say, yeah, Chris is, is exactly, I think she's spot on there. 
uh, I think Canada has uh, national uh, certifications in that country, but we don't here in the U.S. Um, I would say look for somebody who maybe has gone through a certificate program here. Uh, spend some time with that person. See if you if you jail. If somebody's had training, uh, there there would there would be some things that you can look for in the way they, that they carry themselves and in in the way they conduct the session. Are they good listeners? Uh, do they ask questions uh, that will help you feel like you are, you know, progressing in your walk with God? Uh, do they have a sense of spirit with them, a sense of um, that God is present? You know, that this is about God in you as the one who is the directee. It's not about them. Um, sense of they don't have all the answers because spiritual directors are here to give you answers. <laughs> They're not here to you, uh, to handle your problems, uh, and also that they will let you do the work. And, it's co- and they're comfortable with quiet. You know, if there are five, six, seven minutes of quiet, is that comfortable? Uh, I think those are some markers that, that you can look for. You know, and like I said, we offer that certificate program here in Beyond Borders that we have through Hood. And if you're looking for a director, uh, there's a database there with uh, uh, Kim Clark Turner, who has a database, and also Maria King, who has a data database of those who have been trained and received their certificates in, in the Western North Carolina Conference. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. Also in the show notes, we do have a list on the Western North Carolina Conference website of spiritual directors that we um, have identified or that have been identified to us that have done a, a certificate program of some sort. Um, we do always ask that question. So, and, and sometimes they do it by Zoom. So um, we list it by district, but but then some of them we indicate they do by Zoom, so you can access that from anywhere. Um, Debbie, did you have any thoughts? Yeah, we have a similar list in the Florida Conference on our website of spiritual directors listed by district. Most of them will meet uh, with clients by Zoom uh, so that it's really accessible for folks. Um, the one that I had for years, I Skyped with. Uh, that's how that's how we met. She was uh, clear across on the other side of the state. And I got her name from... Uh, as a referral from someone else that I knew had been doing spiritual direction for a long time. Um, And we did an introductory session and we gelled really well. Um, You know, my husband a couple of months ago decided to reach out and find a spiritual director. And I gave him much the same advice uh, that Donnell did, which is, you know, you have to, you have to try it on and you have to talk with somebody and you, you know, most, most spiritual directors now will offer some kind of mini session, uh, just to be able to see if you, um, you do gel and connect. And, um, and so I, I told them, don't go into this thinking that this first person has to be the person, uh, you can, you can, uh, Try somebody else if this doesn't, if you don't connect, um, because it really does need to be someone that you feel comfortable with, um, that you can be vulnerable with, uh, because there is a great deal of vulnerability in this when it's done, um, when it's done well, as you're trusting the spirit. Um, And I think a spiritual directors international is also a place that has a big clearinghouse of folks across the country. Um, who have have taken training and are available. So I have a question. Um, some folks may be under the impression, uh, one of those folks might be on this call right now, um, <laughs> may be under the impression that, um, that a pastor is a spiritual director. And Donnell, you were saying that you offer spiritual direction to your members, but that's because of your background. Can you help me understand what is the difference between what a pastor offers and what a spiritual director offers? Pastoral care. um, Well, first thing, as a pastor, I'm trained to talk. And uh, trained to talk well and trained to talk often and trained to talk everywhere. There we go. (laughs) To kill all the silence they can as often as they can. Um, you know, but uh, and also we train in pastoral care. 
you know, where we are very specific, uh, listening to people, being with them, uh, holding hands. Um, and in, in, in some aspect, uh, there, there, there is, a, in, as far as listening is concerned, yes. But in my pastoral care, I'm really dealing with somebody who may have specific issues. Um, they may want to talk very specifically and expect me uh, to have uh, some responses to their concerns as a pastor. Scriptural responses, uh, some sense of, of responses that may offer forgiveness, a sense of peace. Uh, and so in that respect, I'm not being a spiritual director. As a spiritual director, my whole goal is to be present. Any talking that I do is mostly asking questions that will allow the directee or the one who's receiving spiritual direction to go deeper. I don't offer answers uh, to anybody. I'm not there to be a comforter per se. And, like I would uh, to a parishioner who may be going through a hard time. Though being fully present with somebody does create the environment of comfort. It creates the environment of peace, where, as Debbie was saying, uh, you can feel safe. You can be vulnerable. Uh, they can share themselves. Um, if it gets to the point, you know, where uh, there, and we always say this, I'm present and I don't bring anybody else into the room with us. Like if they identify a problem with their mother or father or a brother or a sister, when they come back, I don't say, well, how is that going with your brother? You know, I don't bring that into the room. Uh, the, the only presence I recognize is the directee and God. Uh, they may bring what they want to into the room, but uh, my goal is always to direct them back to where is God in this? How's your walk with God? Yeah. Uh, does that answer your question about the difference? That's, that's very helpful. Thank you. And so, Debbie, you mentioned that your husband was recently looking and I'm presuming found a spiritual director. Uh, how could someone prepare for their first session with a spiritual director? For me, it's to be still, to be able to, to pray um, and just kind of be open to what the spirit might do. There really isn't anything that you have to, you know, identify or figure out or, or have an answer to before you meet with a spiritual director, because it really is about being present in that moment. I think, you know, maybe just getting yourself to a place where you can be calm and present um, and comfortable uh, so that you can listen uh, and and connect connect with God and connect with the other person. Jesse, one of the things that I do with a new person that's coming in is I send them um, just a list of questions. The thing, documents just called how, "What do I do in spiritual direction?" And so I just send a list of questions that are. Um, I think good questions to just consider. Um, and I'm very clear there. It's not that they're supposed to sit there and answer all the questions before they come in, which I did have one person do, and I felt terrible. <laughs> um, but just to give them an idea of the kinds of things that m might be considered in a session. And I think it's been pretty helpful. Yeah, I went to, to my spiritual director a couple of weeks ago, and I was just going to comment, all of us on this call are United Methodist, but I think it was Chris referenced um, some a spiritual director that was Catholic, and my spiritual director is Catholic. Um, I, I think that, I, I mean, I'm kind of making an assumption, you all might not know the actual history, that this probably all came out of the Catholic Church. Um, maybe once upon a time, or or that it is kind of grounded in, in some Catholic um I don't know, theology or, or principles. I think it, I mean, I know that it, it actually came from the desert mothers and fathers initially, uh, but certainly I think Catholicism was the first organized group that began really practicing this in the more modern times. Yeah. And I've really appreciated um, that, 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 
she doesn't know much about the United Methodist Church except what I tell her. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so <laughs> that's all, always been kind of nice. But I went into my session a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, if people are listening and know me, like I'm going to be prepared. And I didn't know what we were going to talk about. And I was kind of anxious about that. Like I wasn't going in with a, uh, a an agenda in that particular session. I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and she's just beautiful. And like, well, let's just talk and kind of see where the conversation leads. And we left with uh, two invitations from God kind of speaking to me and thinking about. And so it really is just kind of a beautiful process that all you have to do is show up and be open to it. And I guess that's why you're you're trained as a spiritual director to, to kind of to guide what happens. And so that was um, kind of my last question for you was about the training piece. And um, there may be people listening that just think this would be something they'd love to learn more about, whether it's just the skills that you gain, the information that you learn, or maybe the possibility of becoming a spiritual director. And um, and you've done it, all three of you have done it in sort of different ways. Debbie, it sounds like you did it through a DMIN program. And I'll see if I can find that information and put that in the show notes. Um, Donnell, I'm curious because Hood is in our backyard and it would be accessible um, across North Carolina. And they do have this um, relatively new program. And I'll put that in the, um, the show notes. But I wondered if you would talk just a minute more about that particular training. OK. Yeah, I'm one of the instructors in that program. Uh, it's called Beyond Borders. And uh, we uh, kind of focus on the beloved community. Uh, thinking about spiritual spiritual direction as being part of that beloved community. Uh, and we do focus a lot on doing spiritual direction cross-culturally, uh, cross-genders, uh, cross-sexualities. Uh, and we really focus on training uh, our, our, our directors to listen so well uh, to God that they are willing uh, to encounter their own issues. Uh, what do I mean when I say that? Okay, if you have spiritual direction with somebody who may be gay or lesbian or transgendered, or you have a spiritual direction with somebody who's African-American and you're white, or you're African-American and they are white, uh, things will come up uh, always in the session or in just conversation. Um, and so we give people the opportunity to, train, to be trained to start to listen to, okay, this came up. I relate to what they're saying. I'm offended by what they're saying. Uh, I'm challenged by what they're saying. And so we train people to kind of say, okay, it came up. How can you let this not be a distraction? How do you learn to say, well, that's nice. It's here, but let's set it aside. And let that be something maybe I deal with, either with my therapist or my own spiritual director. And that's one thing we do encourage every spiritual director to have a spiritual director, um, someone that you're talking to, that you're going through this process with as well, so that your own walk is being uh, enriched and going deeper, uh, because you can't be a listening presence for, to somebody if you're so filled up that you're just welling over with your own uh, noise and, and questions and and your own issues uh, just get constantly in the way. Uh, so in our school, we, 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 we train, leave the analytics outside. That's the job of what uh, Chris would do as a therapist. We, we we'll send you to her and she'll, and she'll, 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 she'll take care of that as a therapist. <laughs> you know, but uh, we, we just train, be fully present. And as easy as that sounds, it takes two years of hard work to start to crack the door. Yeah, we, we have a two-year program that we uh, send people through. And that's about uh, maybe six cohorts uh, that we, presently we are doing by Zoom, but we probably soon we do that by hybrid as well. Yeah, well, we also wanted to <clears throat> also wanted to mention, too, that as I did uh, call out pastors earlier. It's not just pastors that are uh, spiritual directors, but um, but also laity as well. Um, and so we want to um, both lift up our laity, but also encourage any laypersons out there who feel like this um, this is where God is calling them to, and who would like to listen to that call, um, to encourage them to do so. Um, because I I will say um, I. 
you may have noticed that that our world is is very loud. Um, I, I I grew up in the city, um, and I and and I live in the city now, and I just feel like with all the billboards and all the commercials um, that are constant, whether it's on your phone or on your drive, um, there are so many different things that are pulling you in so many different directions that it can be hard to hear um, what God is saying for us, and it, it can be hard to listen. So I definitely feel like um, I, for one, uh, need um, spiritual direction. Um, and I can think about so many different parts of my life where, um, this would be so, (laughs) this would have been so helpful for me. So, um, if there's anyone out there, um, who is searching for a spiritual director or feels called to it, um, our world is so such in desperate need, um, for it. So Debbie, Donnell, Chris, thank you so much for guiding us in this conversation today, um, for opening our eyes to, um, to, to what you do and to what um, is offered and what the spirit is doing um, through the work that you're doing. So thank you so much for, for your time today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to Means of Grace, a podcast produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. We hope you enjoy listening to these podcasts and use them as a way to stay connected to our community. Remember to subscribe to Means of Grace for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please leave us an honest rating and a review. It helps others find this podcast. Follow the WNCC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at WNCCUMC. Once again, that's at WNCCUMC. Means of Grace is produced by the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church and Andy Go of Gojo Studios.